At 230 kilometers long, the Clarence River is the eighth longest river in New Zealand, flowing primarily between the inland and seaward Kaikoura mountain ranges. It takes roughly five days to paddle its length. This is an account of one such journey. Rafts are getting ready to go. This is awesome. I'm really excited. Five days on the Clarence River. You made this, right? Mr. was Stephen? Stephen. Stephen. Uh, how long have you been involved with this Clarence rafting trip and how did it get started that you're aware of? Um, probably for me about 25 years. I think it started in 91, but I wasn't on that trip. But I think mm. it was probably about mid 90s, 95, 96, or something. And as far as I'm aware, it's run every year. They have a very nice mix of adventurous people in the electrical engineering department. And, um, and I guess they decided to do trips like this. Yeah. So they had the rafts and they thought, why not? Well, how about you yourself? How, how did you get into the outdoors and uh, kayaking, obviously? Oh, gosh. I've kayaked for a long time, but I was originally in Wales. <coughs> That's my home. And I, um, I would have been in a kayak when I was about 10 years old in the sea. And I did a lot of fishing for my kayak through my teens and things. And then we came out to New Zealand in 85, 86. Um, into an adventure playground, you know, where, where oh, the yeah. rivers of the South Island are one of the real features. Yeah. The, uh, the rivers and the mountains of the South Island are about. The rivers are beautiful and clean and, and uh, wonderful the mountain environment. And, yeah. So you sort of get into kayaking because, wow, it takes you out into the outdoors. Yeah. So, yeah, we, I mean, I've always enjoyed kayaking. But I'm not an extreme kayaker, I just mm -hmm. like going down rivers. Yeah. And then I just got to know some of the, um, the university people and eventually they probably said, oh, you know, there's a trip going, come along.
Hi, Doug. Uh, so you've been using a Keteraft, as I understand? I have, yes. You seem very adept at using it. And I, I heard that you have sent it down the, the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about one of those adventures or you know, some of the most interesting or exciting moments of those kind of trips? Yeah, yeah, so the cat is 11 and a half feet long, which is quite small. Okay. So uh, when we arrived over, we went down with a organized group run by professional guides, <laughs> taking other clients down on rafts, and two of us were cataracting. Yeah. And, uh, it was a great deal of fun, but when we arrived, the guides took one look at us and there were wry smiles on their faces. The noises like, ah, oh, there could be a bit of entertainment on this trip. <laughs> Which was good. But um, the cataract I've got is designed and built by a guy in Christchurch called Graham Body, and he's a very, very good engineer. Uh, Andrew, so you did a lot of the uh, organizing for this trip, which we appreciate. Can you tell me some of the logistics involved in terms of organizing such a big group and all the rafts and all this stuff? Oh, it's quite a bit. So, uh, first thing we had to do was actually get some rafts, because we lost all our rafts uh, um, at the start of the year for reasons. <laughs> Andy Buchanan hooked us up with a contact down in Queenstown. Mm. Not everyone's been on every trip. Maybe Jonathan. Maybe. Yeah. 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 So most most years there's been a trip run, and uh, Paul and I took over guardianship of the trip uh, eight years ago or so. Uh, there's quite a bit in terms of getting the rafts ready, um, the gear, but many hands make light work. So. That's true. This year we've got a couple of people on the food, Julia and Christine and Volker did a good job organising all the food. Mm. Paul and myself organised the raft and equipment. Jim Palmer's been really good with the transport and gets the drivers sorted out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite a big team effort then. It's a team effort, that is the key thing. It's a team mm. effort. How about you yourself, like personally? How did you get involved in rafting and maybe the outdoors in general? Okay, so Pat Bodger was my PhD supervisor and he was one of the original um, instigators of the rafting trip back in the day. He's not here this, this particular time. Mm. And um, so I found out about the trip through doing my PhD with Pat. And, um, so I came along and then. After I finished my PhD, I started working for the university and looking after the high voltage lab, which is where the glass was kept. And Pat was like, um, kind of handed the keys over, so to speak, because uh, he was looking to retire. So um, since then, uh, myself and Paul Agger, who's the technician for the lab, have it been running the show, really need looking a lot after of the fire. accounts. You always call off yeah. Get um, if the fire is too yeah, it's hot, it burns it before it cooks. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how I got involved. Just oh, fantastic. Happenstance, really. Yeah. Yeah, I've got tossed out. <laughs> Forward. All right, so we say go left.
so you seem, just over the last few days, I've got the impression that you're quite an avid outdoor adventure person. You know, you, know, you hunt and you shot that goat and you're skippering and tramping. You know, how, how did you develop kind of that love of the outdoors that you have? Uh, I think I just, just always been something I've loved to get in the outdoors, just escape, you know. The idea of adventure, I think, is the driver for me. Yeah. Just sort of getting out and having an adventure. Just the idea of it is exciting, you know. So yeah. any opportunity to sort of move into something that can give me that sense of adventure, I'm up for it. Yeah. How did you develop first develop that kind of passion for adventure? Do you remember? Or? Yeah, I think maybe uh, just as a kid, um, going into like woodlands and stuff, you know, like going exploring woodlands and um, climbing things and all this sort of thing. Yeah. I think it was that sort of, uh, and just an interest of uh, maps. Just imagining what you know, what might be in these places, seeing, seeing maps and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, just that, just that sense of wanting to know what's beyond. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that makes me want to go into the adventure, explore. That's fantastic. What, well, what about like, you mentioned, um, so you moved here from the UK, kind of shifted your family. So what, what's, can you describe what that experience is like kind of moving to a new country and a new home and you know the... I absolutely love New Zealand, it's just, I just feel more settled here than I did in the UK. Uh, for Karen I'd say, you know, I guess with that emotional ties back to the UK, I think it's been definitely harder for her, you know, to kind of adjust and adapt and, and fully kind of like transition to, you know, being settled as, as much as I am but all, all said and done I think it's you know it's worked out yeah thanks for sharing that Paul appreciate it uh, Nigel can you describe so you're obviously really into the outdoors as well uh, you've had the opportunity to share this kind of passion and outdoor stuff with your son can you describe uh, what that experience has been like um, I know it seems to be yeah. every the dream of every parent to kind of share these things but yeah, yeah. Right. yeah what's that been like well for me it's probably you know as a local living in new zealand brought up here um running around with motorbikes down at the wimac and tenting as part of your school program and just generally the outdoors is kind of injected into you in a way that um yeah that you're sort of living it really so um, if you have the slight aptitude to want to get out there and see things um, it's quite easy to just sort of do it and but you sort of got to take your opportunities you know um, and there also is you know the other major large factor of um, your wife kicking you out of the house so, <laughs> I mean, that's really the reason I'm here is because I'm not really allowed in the house. Same <laughs> love, just trouble. Yeah. Contact time. The cartwheel failed because contact time was too long. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. It's actually okay. You could all do this. <laughs> so these are remnants from the Christchurch earthquake. This was a bridge right up until then. Mountains, and suddenly, like, oh, there's a bridge and cars. And 